uh, thank you, uh, Ambassador Pomaleo, Secretary of the Prime Minister's Department, uh, Secretary uh, Sohon, our FLC, uh, Deputy Secretaries, all our senior executive members, all our staff, uh, right down to all who make our offices smart. Uh, my favorite people who are in green and uh, the green outfit, uh, all of you members. Myself and uh, Treasurer, representing our government, would like to sincerely appreciate the fact that uh, you all are still at work. Uh, our country has many challenges, but nothing is insurmountable. Uh, all our challenges can be overcome if we all make a concerted effort to make a difference. Uh, we all live one life. Uh, that life is time-bound. If you all had my conversations with you, in the last two or three times I had with you. Uh, we mess our life against 70 years. Uh, biblically speaking, you read Psalms 90 verse 10. It says, all on average says 70 years. That's the productive lifespan all every human being has on planet Earth. So in your own life and in your own career, uh, I don't know about you, but I mess up my life against the year 70. And so if I'm 51 today, I know I have on average 19 more years of productive life in this, on, on my uh, sojourn on planet Earth. And so in the 19 years I have left, what is the best I could leave behind? What is the best I could leave behind? Uh, for me, I choose a life of uh, being in politics. Uh, politics may be offensive uh, to some of you as a career. But nonetheless, in every leadership society, in every society, there's always a leadership lead. And as far as our democratic country is concerned, the leadership lead rests on the election process and the outcome of the election process. And in as far as 2022 election outcome is concerned, uh, I am privileged. I do acknowledge uh, uh, the Honorable Peter Samueli, uh, our re-elected regional member for Bougainville. Uh, thank you. In every leadership, in every society, there's always a leadership lead. We have been subscribing to our uh, democrat, democratic system of government since 1975, and uh, we are here. Uh, for me and the current government, we are privileged to be given an undisputed mandate at the uh, polling places, as well as on the floor of parliament, as evident in the proceedings that took place last week, Tuesday. Uh, that is a mandate that we do not take for lightly and for granted. The higher the mandate, the greater the responsibility for us to deliver to expectations of our people. Our people today live in a nation of abundance, yet poverty is prevalent. Yet school dropouts have no seemingly positive pathway in life. Yet mothers are dying, children are dying at birth and at the different stages of their life because of lack of basic to specialist health care. Uh, these issues are, are common amongst us, but not insurmountable. Together with the elected leaders and the appointed leaders, I classify every one of you who work in the public service as appointed leaders. You may not have to be secretary of this department, uh, but you are leader in your own right, placed in such a time to make a difference when it matters most for our people. Prime Minister's department is the premier department. And I'm privileged one more time to step into a room full of officers, young and old, male or female, highlands or coastals, Irrespective, we represent the diversity of our country, one people, one nation, one country. We are here to do our utmost best. And uh, whilst the expectations is high on us collectively, the work before you must be done, whatever it is. And uh, we will have a, a moment together where we will go through what we must do as Prime Minister's Department. I receive uh, an, an appointment with each and every one of you again for another occasion. 
but today I did not expect this welcome. In fact, myself, our Deputy Prime Minister, uh, our Minister for Treasury and uh, the Finance and the one or two other portfolios attached with him, we will be going through revisiting what we intend to do or committed to do since 2019. We are not a new government, we are a continuing government. And so we will not reinvent the wheel, but we will improve on what we said we will do, what we have done, and what we must do going forward, embracing uh, every suggestion that is on the floor for us to pick up and make our country great, as I committed on 30th of May 2019. <coughs> our road to reconstruction and rebuild our country started back then three years ago. We will now be revisiting what we have done and what we must do going forward. I have delayed appointment of ministers until I have a report coming in through from all departments as to what we have done in the last three years. We are not here to enjoy the perks and privileges of office. We are here to do <coughs> positive outcomes for our country because the people expect that. If anyone doubts the Pangu Party philosophy, when we went to the elections, or if ever anyone, especially those who are tuning in from abroad, our class of investors, our naysayers and doomsayers, well, the message is loud and clear at the polls. Pangu Party has picked up 38 seats thus far. Pangu Party is picking one more seat possibly in the counts that are still going on, and that will bring 39 out of 81 we contested. We came second, third or fourth in over 30 seats that we lost, and the balance were all within top 10 in the race of a field of five women and 80, 76 male candidates that contested on the Pango Party. Pango Party is no ordinary party. It is about Papua New Guinea in unison and Papua New Guinea moving in the right space to make everyone enjoy the blessings God has placed in our land. So I look forward to working with all of you again until my time is up. And I ask each and every one of you, you have talents. Women and men are given talents by God. You already occupy an important place in our structure here in PM's department. You may not be the secretary, but you have a work. Let's find our job and look beyond the realms of our fortnightly space. Our fortnightly income is a byproduct of your employment. But I just want us to expand our scope of vision and see Vision 2050 as the benchmark destination. The richest black Christian nation statement I stated consistent with Vision 2050 is the benchmark statement. Let us work the steps that need to be worked upon to get our country into that destination. For we can do it. There is no point you and me traveling to overseas and enjoying the ambience of life overseas, only to come back and live in the same PNG that we have today. Ten years from today, I want to live in a better PNG, safer PNG, educated PNG, healthier PNG, connected PNG, where economy has gone past 200, the economy has gone past 200 billion in a mark. In the last ten, three years, we took up an economy that was a 79.6 billion in economy through sustainable use of deficit financing and wise use of deficit budgeting. We are able to grow it to a 30 billion in economy. Our trust rate is cognizant to what needs to be done to ensure that your burden as a citizen is lightened by our government through policy interventions we will be doing and we will work the space for the greater benefit of our people instead of benefiting one or two who have access to the seat of power. So that's what we will be all about in the next uh, five years. I just want you, the least I expect of you is do your best. If every one of us do our best for our country, then the rest is easy that the rest is collectively best for our country. So I just want to say thank you for welcoming me. I am just but one person. 
if you're welcome to me, is in total sincerity, and I just want each and every one of you look beyond your fortnight and give your best in your office. Give your best in your office. So, last three years, all of you know, I relied on no external advices. I had no fancy advices with me. I tried rebuilding this department that lost its value under previous regime. This department must not be run by Prime Minister and Prime Minister's office alone. This department must run Prime Minister's office, not Prime Minister's office running this department. You get the point? This department must run Prime Minister's office, not the Chief of Staff or Prime Minister running this department, as it was in the past. Because Chief of Staff and Prime Ministers will go, but the department will live on. The institutional memory, the corporate me memory, the department memory is important for the country. Politicians like me will come and go, but the department will live on. And so I appeal to the inner reserve of your mind or inner consciousness of your heart. Find your pathway in making PNZ great and better. Together we can do it. On your own, you cannot do it. On my own, my uh, we cannot do it. Our country will collapse. Prime Minister Department is the head. If the head is thinking correctly, the country is functional correctly. I want this department to be filled with the best. I've made redundant all my ministerial staff so that I select the best to work in my ministry staff right now. And if there is a signal, if there is a signal, then the department, uh, we will be visiting the lineup we have in the department. With no element of discrimination, I want the best in this department. So that this department functions and operates on full throttle, not half throttle, full throttle, so that our country can be led well. And I believe in the talent I have before me. I have seen you from a distance and up close. That is why I have no advisor with me, as I said earlier. You are the woman and man I will rely on. Let's get back and find our space. In the next one or two days, I will be working with yourselves to assemble how we've come in the last three years. And I need to hear your recommendation from you. I apologize, your, those of you who wrote a paper on Singapore, uh, I have a fair bit of idea who is ranked number one, two, three, it was just even, almost even split. I will, I will, uh, I, I will, uh, I will attend to this in one of my next meetings with those of you who had a time to write that paper. But I want you to find me Good recommendations from where you sit as to how we could collectively make our country better. Last week when we were, uh, when we invited PF's department and national planning to come, I was not quite satisfied. I need statistics, not words. Statistics to guide us make proper decisions for our country. And departments like Prime Minister's department and planning department must be equipped with the latest statistics to assist me as a stress round, making the right decisions for our country. For if you do not equip us with those necessary statistics, then we would be only responding to ad hoc sort of advices. So those are work before us. Uh, now we will hit the ground running until September. If some of you have some, especially the section heads, work with Secretary Pomali and the deputies and ensure that we get the right advice. And in the September Parliament sitting, we can make the right pronouncements for our country. And collectively, you can say, you as Prime Minister Department had a hand in the way our country's journey is forecasted going forward. Thank you, Thomas. God bless each and every one of you. Very good.